Ravi, we're back. We're, we're back. back from paternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> Summer vacation. Like, summer vacation. Uh, yeah, because I, I can't take a summer vacation because my summers are busy. <laughs> Let, let's, let's count let's count it as the football season's underway. We've had two international breaks already. Yeah. Champions League started, the new format. Yeah. And yeah. you've got a new member of your family. Yeah, absolutely. And the Premier League starts as well. And yeah, football season. Yeah, yeah, no, so much going on, honestly. Um on on top of all of that, we've had Dreamforce, we've mm-hmm. had new releases from Tableau. There's lots of energy in the analytics space, I think. Like it feels it feels exciting for the first time again, doesn't it? Like Techtober. Yeah, Techtober. I think it's maybe just that actually. October is when all the announcements get um kind of laid out. So it's good. And you sound better than ever. <laughs> We're here and now live with a new mic kindly donated by TN Media. <laughs> I think it, otherwise known as Tableau Tim. <laughs> otherwise known as Tableau Tim. I think it was on a on a run that I was listening back to our last pod, which was two months ago now. Right. I was like, right. Tim, there's, there's so much echo. You're so kind as to um how how good my mic actually is. Um yeah. unless I'm but, right against it. So but we do have to keep your mic game on point. Every time you look away, it goes quiet. So uh, yeah. keep 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 keep, keep at talking it. at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's it's a good little upgrade for the podcast. I think it's sure. about time to be brutally honest. Like I think, um, yeah, we we're going to do this more often. It's a bit of an investment, um, and I think it makes sense. So we have a lot of topics to talk about. I'll do What's a quick sort of uh, like what is it? Ten thousand foot view. They like to call it in AWS land. Dreamforce, all the stuff that got announced there. Agents, Einstein got a proper showcase in a Tableau keynote. Ah, agents versus co-pilots will come on to that. Uh, as you would like to say, mind the gap. Uh, mind the, the gap. The, mind the, the gap. <laughs> with the classic Salesforce slide about the gap between you know everyday analysts and the rest of the business. And then there was a couple of announcements since Dreamforce that kind of really speak to the fact that Tableau is becoming a platform. And, yeah, for um, sure. We heard some announcements from DBT and Tableau partnering together, but there's also a couple of other things we, we'll sort of dig into there. And then lastly, um, new releases. There's been lots of new Tableau. Um, Einstein has been getting updated monthly. Pulse has been getting updated monthly, but 24.3 is like the big statement release, the last one of the year. Yeah. It's not a release for server, but it is a release for cloud. So lots of things there that are coming out for desktop and cloud. So yeah, lots to get into. Lots to get into. And DataFam Europe is only a month away. Of course, of course. My first, uh, here's a crazy, here's a crazy fact. I've never been to a Tableau conference as Tableau Tim. (laughs) This is true. This is true. You were Information Lab Tim. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I've not been to a conference since 2019. I started my channel after the Las Vegas conference. I went to New York with uh, Brie. And, uh, back then, we weren't married. She's now my now my wife, and yeah, it was crazy. And then COVID wife happened. and three children later, and a uh, yeah a massive YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so I've not been to a Tableau conference. I've been to a Tableau event virtually. You weren't even life. a visionary then. I've not. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Very true. Yeah, you yeah, were just a dude. Was, I was just a dude. I was just a what? What, what do you call us when you're not? Uh, a, a customer, <laughs> a partner or a customer. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's your label, right? <laughs> Member of the data fam. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking forward to. It. I am gen. I've taken time off, like either side of either side of this conference. I, I really want to enjoy it. For me, I think it's a great opportunity to meet people, yourself, obviously, and tons of other awesome people that mm-hmm. can make it to Europe, um, including the Tableau. Devs, Tableau product managers, Tableau leadership. Um, have, you, have you seen where it is, the location? It's literally next door to the data school, the information lab. Oh, amazing. So it's behind Perfect. St. Paul's Cathedral. So <laughs> it's a proper walk down memory lane. It is going to be a full on walk down memory lane at Cannon Street coming off like all the, oh, maybe I can get some of my old bad habits in and go get me some uh, Leon on the way in. <laughs> That Leon, I don't think is there anymore. Is it not? Is it? Did it get closed down? The one next to day so. school. I think so. Oh, that must have been like a post-COVID thing. Well, there'll be a fifty prets that I can lean on. Instead. Burrito Joe's is no longer a stand; it's a shop. All right. Yeah. All anyway, right. it's a shop. Burrito it's a shop. Joe's it's... got an upgrade. Wow. Okay. You know what? I, it's a little secret. 
I hated Burrito Joe's. <laughs> I never liked the thing. I never liked the place. I went there twice and I just did not get the hype. You know, I'm a Shake Shack person. That, that's where you'll find me. Nice, uh, greasy food. But hey, there you go. Right. Super. Let's get on to it. Dreamforce. Dreamforce. What did you think? What did you take away? It was the big event, right? Like, I think that there's a lot of things. There was the event prior to Dreamforce where we heard about the new Tableau experience, which is Tableau mm-hmm. Einstein, which I think we covered in depth in our last video. Um, but Dreamforce was the one where they this was coming to life. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite moment was uh, the, the, the gag between Tableau Pulse and Tableau Plus by the chief marketing officer. <laughs> <laughs> Former chief marketing officer. Former, E-Mac. yes. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E- Emacs has left the building. Um, yeah. Um, She's now at Contentful, which is a content company. Helps people write content. Anyway, I've excellent. massacred that. Yeah, no, um, but yeah, yes. Tableau Pulse, Tableau Plus. Um, it even happens to the best of us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the biggest biggest change, obviously, is uh, agent force for Tableau. Uh, so goodbye right. to Einstein Copilot. Hello to... Agent force for Tableau powered by Tableau Einstein on the Einstein analytics platform. <laughs> Secured by the Einstein trust, plan, <laughs> which you need a Tableau plus uh, uh, serial number to, 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 oh God, yeah. I think, I think, you know, when I posted about that on LinkedIn, I wrote that sentence and I was like, yes, I thought I'd drag it out a little bit and just, you know, just yeah. go all the way with that sentence to just highlight the silliness sometimes of, um, I want to say Tableau product naming, but I think I have to call it Salesforce naming. Um, mm-hmm. There is a sort of big search to always give everything a name, but I, I think you could just be massively simple. I kind of said to um, someone from product marketing that take a leaf out of Apple. The feature can be named simply, but you don't need to keep shoving like Einstein and Tableau in front of them. They can just be named after the things they do. But anyway, we'll get into that. So. I think the thing about this Dreamforce was that really what it felt like a pivot. And to be fair, and I think this is a really important context to take, to be fair, the whole industry is pivoting away from co-pilots to agents. So this isn't just like something that Mark Benioff has sort of come in and thought. There is a general mood in the industry with AI that everything we've seen so far is great, but things need more agency. These these AI capabilities need to be able to do things on your behalf and so agents have become the moniker that you know a lot of startups but also big large tech companies are using that's why you know gemini's is, is going to be an agent you know yeah. siri is going to be an agent on your phone in, in many ways and so the first, the first time i heard about an agent was when i was deciding what to do with my dissertation um <laughs> And it was, uh, yeah, my usual behavioral science, blah, blah, blah. Right. And that you could do a simu- th- there was a paper that did a simulation which of the, the village or werewolf problem of you need to, or vampire, whatever you want to call it. Right. And it was a simulation where you create agents to, you gave <laughs> it a program and you basically said, you have a finite amount of villages yeah. but, and every single, as every day passes, you need to give an offering. Like there is an equilibrium workout and right. then the machine would go out and work out what the equilibrium was, which is basically what a complex AI agent will do, right? Like I think the most interesting thing about this is everything that's happening around AI is very well documented, right? Like we are seeing the conversation happen in front of us and it's historical. Whereas I think definitely with the, the internet, like the World Wide web, yeah, it's, you have to go looking for it. Even early, early innovations in social media and the tech space, you can't really find it. Whereas this sort of thing is the revolution is very much happening online yeah, exactly um, which is where like you almost are comfortable with the pace it's going up because you can see the pace it's going up. yeah and in a way um i think the progress you see is more tangible because it's kind of happening in front of you they're all building it out in public i mean we're going to talk a bit about yeah. that with einstein in a second but because they're building it in public there is a sense that you can keep <laughs> dare i use the pun a pulse on what's going on. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, I do think though, I do think though, there is, there's room for a little bit of what I would say wiggle room. And I think this is, this is something I don't fully understand natively within Salesforce. So we have this agent force thing, right? And, yeah. um, I mean, I'll be fairly blunt, even product managers at Tableau weren't on dial the day this was announced, right? So, 
it, it feels to me like something got decided at Salesforce. It got branded as we are not going to talk about copilots anymore. Anything that says copilot, replace it, like find and replace it with agent force. And so everything became, went from being a copilot to being an agent, but it doesn't feel like anyone looked at the experiences that people were using and actually tested that question, whether agent was a fitting term for the feature that they were going to replace copilot. Cause I think copilot in many sense did actually exactly. make broad sense. And when they initially thought of it, like it made sense, like your it's kind of thing wing man or wing woman yeah. that kind of gets you to where you need to be. It's not doing the work for you. You can instruct it. You drive it. You tell it what to do. Right. But on some level, isn't an agent doing some of the work for you? Right. Like, I think, isn't that the slight difference here? And this is where I think there's a big difference between the Salesforce platform as a whole and why mm -hmm. agents, I think, work there as a context and Tableau. It doesn't yeah. work because in Salesforce, there are many activities that are essentially chained. The Salesforce kept on talking about flows, um, you know, experiences, and those experiences are basically stitching together different parts of the Salesforce ecosystem. So yeah. there it does make a sense to talk about agents because you can ask an agent to, to look at certain scenarios handle certain types of interactions with customers and have specific outcomes based on those interactions. An agent can go and do those things. But in the realm of Tableau, if you take that same theory, what you would expect from an agent in Tableau would be something that's monitoring your metrics, monitoring your dashboards, understanding the metrics you really care about and surfacing them to you and telling you a story and pointing you to the things that need your attention. That to me is an agent. That's sort of where Pulse is hopefully going to end up, but it's not there yet. But you're building in public, right? Uh, so know, it's okay because now you, you, by saying you're building and developing with the customer, I you know, know. You, you want to make sure it's fitting to the journey we're on together. Like you, you yeah. can then end up releasing something that's not fully finished because you're not saying this is the polished product. This is a, the start right. of something really big that was going to change everything. And that's where I think, you know, in my video, I said, there is a world where both can coexist. Like mm -hmm. on your way to building the agent, you can still have co-pilots. It's totally fine. Like a developer, when they're coding something in VS Code, thinks of the autocomplete as a co-pilot, helping them write code. Yeah. They still decide what they do. So I do think there was an opportunity missed to say, yeah, we're working towards agents, but we're not quite there yet, at least on this feature set. So what you have here in prep is a co-pilot. What you have here in Tableau is a co-pilot. Yeah. Yeah. What you have in Pulse and what you have in the whole of Tableau, that is an agent. And agents can work with co-pilot. You know, there is a whole world there that I think missed an opportunity. But I get from a marketing perspective, the, the cleanliness, the sort of, um, what's the word? Um, there's a word. Um, it's what, tidy. It's very neat. It's tidy, yes. Very neat. Um, it's the kind of word you'd use for like a dentist. Um, what's the word? Sanitized. Sterile, yeah. Sanitized. That's the one. <laughs> you got me there. So yeah, it's a very sanitized way of dealing with the problem and probably wanted to move off the co-pilot naming because that's synonymous with Microsoft, someone they you know generally would like to be seen to be competing yeah. with. And whether or not they do directly is a whole nother thing, but um, nonetheless, yes. So, so yeah. now put, putting the the hat on of someone who's a purchase decision maker customer, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want? To what hear? am I buying? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if, if you, if you're sat here yeah, as a decision maker, what you end up having is what, what am I buying? What, what is, does my license get me and how much am I paying for what? And, uh, and mm -hmm. yes, you might get a package, a deal, something that's bespoke created for you, but ultimately it might not be the right thing or you might get upsold something and suddenly you've got something that's relatively sticky and yeah, it, it becomes a bit, a lot more ambiguous. And, and I, I don't think the average consumer likes ambiguity. I don't yeah. like ambiguity. Yeah. No one does. No one does. Um, it's also quite, I mean, if I dig into what you've just said there, well, you're getting nothing unless you have tablet plus right. one <laughs> so, and cloud and cloud. Yeah, exactly. Um, so those two things are pretty important. And number two, um, there's only one pricing tier. So like everyone, you basically Tableau Plus is like, like they like to say wall to wall Tableau, you know, in many sense, because of all the other stuff you get, it doesn't really make sense to do it in a small way. 
Um, and then lastly, I think this is like a, what's the word? Um, there is actually a, a philosophical problem with AI in an analytics product. And it's simply this. Before AI, with analytics products, it was already tough enough to make sure that what you were seeing was correct, right? Like, it was really tough enough to deal with this, what I would call governance and validation problem that, you know, data sources create. And Tableau were all about building the tools to give you that visibility and trust. Yeah. Like freaking data management, whole skew exists entirely to ask this, answer this one problem. How do I no build trust in and Tableau organization? Trust. Yeah. Yeah. How do I build, how do I build trust, validation and governance into my platform? And data management was supposed to give you all that, the lineage and all that. And here you are, just like like a snap, like a Thanos snap. Boom. You've introduced AI. That goes out the window because the thing isn't accurate. Like the thing, thing generates mistakes. And the, the worst thing is to validate those mistakes. I mean, so far, um, in different places, there's different experiences. In Tableau Prep, I actually think it's really, really good because it's very focused on calculations. And it's very easy for it to get right. And you can see the outcome very easily in Prep. Mm -hmm. Natural fit. In Tableau Desktop, you know, even just using one of its own prompts, it just it just falls off a cliff almost straight away. And I think because th there the scope is too broad. And so, you know, you introduce this new problem, which is if you're a new analyst who this is supposed to help and you're yeah. going to use this, you need your work peer reviewed by someone, right? You need your work peer reviewed by an experienced analyst. You're not solving the problem. You're just, you're just creating a new one in many ways. And then on the other hand, if you're an advanced user, you don't use it because like you, you, you try the most complex things you already know how to do in it and it can't do it yet. It tells you oh, this is not supported. It'll mm -hmm. even do things like say, I can't write regex. Regex is not supported in Tableau. Hello. Calculation window has a reference thing that says regex is there. And I, so you know, it's it's just a really weird paradigm in a product. I just find I, it strange. I think the the tricky part again with desktop especially is people don't write calcs for the reasons Tableau think they write calcs. Yeah, right? yeah. For people example, write, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I've I've found my first ever work or use case where I might have to do the map layers hack to do an advanced chart type. No, and I've wanted please. to avoid this. Right. I wanted this to like have a splash, flash in the pan and then disappear. Yeah. But here I am. My two options are buy, buy, pay someone to create a Viz extension for me right. or use map layers. So here, okay. Eric, so we're, here we, we're there. We're, we're, I'm now looking at map layers to solve this problem I've got. Um, okay. But... And, but how, how is Tableau to know if I then say, okay, cool, I want to create a complex chart type, but I, instead of using, let's say, a scatter plot and a bar, I want yeah. to use map layers based on this. Uh, let's say it's so smart, I, I can upload a sketch based on this sketch. Help me backward energy this. It won't know what to do because yeah. this is very much a data creativity problem. It's not even a data yeah. wrangling problem. It's a... Yeah creative data problem where you have to understand yeah. everything Tableau is doing, everything you want to do, and then create the steps in between, which is why, again, another thing I've done recently is um, speak to someone who I think he's one, either in my team or someone who was um, one of our creators was using chat GPT to create their or tweak the fixed LODs. And I'm like, right, come on. It's not, it's going to create a really complex fixed LOD and it doesn't really understand how, how to do it. Yeah. So just first understand it because it's not like it. SQL that's more like homogenous and there's almost like the entire of Stack Overflow mm -hmm. solving SQL problems. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a very, yeah. it's, an, it's still a niche skill, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I think these tools do surface knowledge to people in a way that yeah. I don't think that's ever been possible in the product. So much of Tableau is buried inside of Tableau. It's not, you know, the documentation doesn't surface these things. I will come to this later when we talk about 24-3 and spatial um, parameters. Like I went down a massive rabbit hole there and I just, there was just stuff I didn't know was the case and it's not in the documentation either. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's really, really, really tough. Um, but, you know, if, if I sort of use that as a transition to the infamous slide, that we always see the right? gap with mind the, the gap mind the gap 
<laughs> for everyone's context, this this is the slide that Salesforce or Tableau always use, have done systematically at virtually every keynote for the last now three and a half years, yeah. which shows a gap. And on the left, you have your <laughs> Tableau community members, uh, your visionaries, your ambassadors, and on the right, um, sorry, I've explained it the wrong way around. On the right, you have your you know experts, and on the left, you have your business users and analysts. And they talk about the chasm and then they place the thing they're pitching in the middle as bringing a closing this gap, basically. Such a, you know, metaphor, visual metaphor for people. But we had a rainbow this time. <laughs> oh, we had a rainbow, which means uh, things are getting better, hopefully. <laughs> so, yes, no, I, you know, to, to sort of close that gap, I think there is a realization that these stores have some way to go and they can't just answer the questions. They've also got to solve the problems and then do the work, right? Like all three of those things need to need to fit in place. And so I think we are starting to see a bit of that in actual Tableau answer. And there's an acknowledgement that like, right, if we're going to do this properly, we better build a freaking awesome semantic layer because none of this works without it, right? And, you know, all of that stuff starting to sort of now, come together. What you could do, Tim, is create a new semantic layer or you could buy or partner with one such as <laughs> DBT. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So great yeah, segue. I mean, yeah, great segue. And let's give some context. So Tableau and DBT announced a partnership. Yeah. Um, and this is off the back of Coalesce, Coalesce being DBT's um, annual conference, and um, Tableau being um, a, a technology partner of DBT, also had a blog post about this. So let me just let me just pull it up. Um, but I think this is quite um, interesting. Um, because I think what it's a, it's a sign of is this thing that Tableau have been saying for some time, which is that, you know, Tableau is a platform, right? And they've been saying that a lot, but what it's meant in the past is that Tableau itself is building platform-like features uh, and not really mean Tableau itself is becoming a platform that other things can plug into. And since VisQL data service, we've started to see the flip of this narrative, right? Tableau genuinely becoming a platform, bringing people in. And that's what kind of led to this announcement. I think. Yeah, so, so you've already got an existing relationship with Databricks, which was announced, yeah. I think, either earlier this year or last year. You've got mm -hmm. a, a strategic relationship with Microsoft to an extent, which obviously servicing one of the newer features, integration with Teams, which we'll talk about in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition, you've got like, all new features seem to come with an API, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. new features in Tableau have an API or something allow allowing it to be extensible to developers. And I think the the data dev ambassadors in particular are gonna have a great time have sort of evangelizing and exploring all of yeah. these new APIs and trying to educate yeah. and make sure that there's enough documentation and, and sharing around the cool stuff that's being done here. Exactly. Um, I mean And I think just... this developer ecosystem, again thinking mm -hmm. about exchange, thinking about viz extensions. We just continue to grow and grow. And yeah, like I said, the it will just become a new big user base alongside your traditional dashboard designer and your yeah. your traditional server admin. This is yeah. now a significant portion of, of the Tableau customer base. 100%. Many ways Tableau's become probably the more agnostic analytics platform compared to Power BI, which Power BI really to get the most out of it requires you to lean into Azure and some of the other stuff, right? Um, but yeah, to, to touch on what was actually announced by DBT and Tableau, just as a quick highlight, the ability to export DBT models and metrics straight to Tableau, create data sources without having to do, do that stuff in Tableau, amazing. Lineage and data help all the way through. Um, the interesting thing about some of this is some of it is already available in server. There's actually been a yeah. DBT extension on the Tableau extension gallery, but this is specifically about bringing it to cloud, which doesn't have that capability yet because that integration needs to be done by both of them working together. Um, build visualizations import, uh, based on important DBT data models. So starting a workbook on a model in DBT rather than a connection, that's like pretty awesome. Um, pulse metrics, again, being done directly connected to DBT models. So you write your DBT metrics and then you ping the um, API and pulse just generates those metrics automatically. And then better collaboration between uh, people. So getting DBT into 
apps like Slack and Teams, we'll come to that in a second, um, so people have a better experience throughout the platform. So really, it just literally feels like someone just opened the guts of Tableau and said, hey, what can we do here? And Tableau's yeah. just like, anything, you know, yeah. <laughs> have it all. Like, and and, and that's solutions. really exciting. For, for yeah, me, that's exactly. really exciting. It's actually a very useful direction to go in in terms of yeah. collaboration, in terms of extensibility, in terms of where the world's going in this space. Yeah. Um, where, you know, 2015, 2017, 2018, it's quite crowded. Like there's a lot of yep. people doing a lot of things, doing about the same thing. Yeah. And suddenly you have to map against them. But I think each each product in the <laughs> Gartner Magic Quadrant um, had, has its own thing now, right? Like, so yeah. it's almost like yeah. you've got a really good broad church yeah. of, well, actually, if you don't want to do that, this probably isn't the right tool for you. And that's okay because um, you have we'll choices. Some other way. <laughs> yeah, there's another way with something else, and mm -hmm. you can bring your own stack to that as well. Um, yeah, exactly. So I think this is great. I think this this moves moves Tableau on for sure. Yeah, um, and even the partnership with Microsoft to get Teams. Um, I'm so excited same, about this. Same play, playing field as Slack. Um, obviously, Microsoft Teams is just not as great an app. I think I think I, like I keep saying this, people laugh, but I genuinely think there is not many people who love teams if that makes sense they just have to use teams because it's kind of hoisted on their companies through the microsoft partnerships right so it's also just not as stable and i'm not saying slack is better slack also has its problems but the interesting thing here is because you have to use it for work it's actually good now that tableau is able to hook into it because yeah. it feels like this is a much bigger user base of this kind of application and so in a weird way, Tableau will get probably more feedback from Microsoft Teams users about this kind of capability yeah. than they will get from Slack users because Slack is just not as embedded in Ubiquitous. enterprise uh, companies as Slack. You have to be more or less a startup to be using Slack. You know, like have a, have a certain opinion about these kinds of chat apps to use Slack. You know, you, you're, I, I think there's thousands of thousands of companies aren't playing Slack licenses. Yeah, th this is this is the um, this is the problem you have when you're the first mover that everyone uses. Everyone use have, everyone's first computer is a Windows machine, right? Therefore, True. you don't love Microsoft Office, right? <laughs> but when you discover yeah. Google Docs, for example, you're like, oh, this is super cool, you, yeah, right? You make in, in a that, similar yeah. vein, no one picks teams like when you when you're like oh you know let's hang out with friends i'm not about like, yeah let's create some teams channels and hang yeah, out teams yeah you, you might have a friend slack channel i know people that have had slack channels just yeah. for just for totally, pals yeah. um you'd use discord but like it's not a fun different platform experience right yeah. it's very much a this is this is just it's just teams it's just skype yep. shifted in to a yeah. sort of new product, right? Yeah. I mean, there was a world once upon a time where you had Teams, Yammer, and Skype for business <laughs> under your same Yammer, gosh, um, yeah, Microsoft existence. But yeah, no, it's it's all competing for it's all same, competing yeah. in the same yeah. space, which is bizarre. But is and, and this is why they, no one loves yeah. Teams. You're right, um, but yeah. this 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 truly continues Tableau's mission to bring analytics to where Open your users up. are, yeah. right? Which is exactly. exactly what we're doing here with Databricks. Is exactly what we're doing here with dbt yeah and let's not try and, and yeah 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 All let's, let's stop trying to create a tool that does notebooks let's stop trying to create a tool that is has a semantic layer that you can create models on no, no, no. just let's just open up and eat where we're eating which yeah. i think we we see the we, we will see the benefits from because product manager and developer time will then be simply spent on developing tablet tableau features yeah leave the other stuff to the of the other companies you've partnered with and just start connecting people yeah exactly yeah and it's um it's an interesting one because i do feel generally the industry is gravitating towards well i think enterprise companies are gravitating towards more open more open platforms i.e platforms where you can you can pick and mix 
what you want to do where. So if you want to do your metadata management in the platform, the platform can do it. But if you yep. don't want to, you can go get something else, right? And that seems mm -hmm. to be almost becoming the case with everything. You've got Viz extensions, you've got um, uh, table extensions, which are to do with the connections, Ravi, remember? And then we've got uh, Tableau tables, <laughs> which are coming up in, in a bit. At pretty much every point in the platform now, it seems like there is an external alternative. Um, that allows you to sort of lean into whatever you want to give companies really the flexibility. I guess in a funny way, Tableau just want to make the product stick. So if that means you can get your your mitts into it and you know tangle yourself up in it, great. Like <laughs> Tableau loves that. And I think but that's this, this exists in sports um, technologies. When we look at sports technologies in in my line of work, one of the things we look at is okay, cool. How, how does it operate? Does it have an API that we can push data out of? And also, stuff. where we need to, can we pull data in? And then yeah. when we're entering data, can we manipulate it? But well, like, yeah. it has to do all three in order for it to be a sticky platform, as you said. So it's quite yeah. interesting because it is quite interesting when you, when you see that trend in the tech world as well. Exactly. Um, exactly. Shall we talk about tables? Um, yes. Yes. 24, <laughs> three, should we start from the top? So 24, three just came out, kind of came out really fast. I was not expecting it to come out in October. I thought more November. So I feel like now we do know the official dates that Tableau is going to be targeting for next year. They're very sort of equidistant, starting from about uh, March. So you get March, April, May, June, July, August, um, September, October. And in that, you have conference as well, which kind of sort of throws things kilter. But 24.3, final release of the year, um, cloud release and desktop and prep and all that stuff. No server release. No server, here. nothing for me. Uh, we only had one update that was the previous one, 24 2. Um, smooth upgrade, features. by the way, J just as a server admin shout out. Like it was, it was a very nice, quick, smooth update. Yeah. Um, nice. Good. So, the, to 24 2. So, you're on 24 2. Yeah. Yeah. You can use this nice new table extension because it's backwards compatible, Ravi. So, you're not going to miss out. This is actually quite a nice thing. And, We'll this is why we like Viz extensions. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back. Like, let's let's sort of lean into this. So, twenty four three. I think biggest feature in the release. Obviously, it's going to be a desktop feature. Table Viz extension. What is it? It's essentially not the thing I thought was wrong, <laughs> and it's not anyway. Not a table extension, which is a way to bring in. Um, R and Python as a data source on top of your data inside of the connection window, inside of the data model or the joins, whatever. Which and technically extends together. your table. <laughs> extends your table of data. Yes, exactly. It's like, it's like you can run a computation on a column and then have it sit alongside your data, basically. Yeah. But you can do that um, in live query time, whatever. Table viz extension, Tableau tables. Um, I don't know why they use two different names. Um, these bring, and I called it Excel like capabilities, um, to tables. So you can essentially add as many columns as you need, uh, bring measures, dimensions in, format them, get them to work really nicely. Um, I'm not going to go into it cause I think you just have to see it to understand, you know, how it's different to a traditional table, but it very much answers the thing that you know, most end users want with these tables when they get them, which is the ability to manipulate them like Excel. So search them, filter them, all that jazz. Um, now. And that export thing, the CSV. And export, well, they exported Excel, not an CSV. But, but th th this, this, I think, nails the crux of why it exists. Yes, it's a, exactly. hey, Excel users, here you go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> For those of you who love Excel and just want something familiar, here you go. And actually, this brings me on to a very important point that I feel like I want to get off my chest. I've had a couple of people respond to my video and just say, well, just use Excel then. And my gut response has been, it's a bit like saying to a car enthusiast who takes a car to a dyno to get a few more horsepower, just use a horse. It's like, that's not what they were asking. <laughs> just add a horse to your car. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... They were asking for this functionality within Tableau, hence the phrase Excel-like. Excel is a, Excel is an experience as well as a product. So an a familiar -like, experience. Then exactly. Excel-like means, can I do the things that I've learned in Excel in the product? And that's essentially what this Viz extension does uh, deliver. I, I, I already, we, we've already had an internal discussion that there's so many use cases for this. Now, yes. in order to there's do problems. this sort of thing, 
yeah. in yeah. Tableau right now, yeah. you have to use parameters. Oh, you nice. have to use filters. You have LODs. to use LODs. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so unperformant. And bam, we've got physics extensions yeah. that make things performant again. <laughs> make data performant again. There's a slogan. The, like, bring back the cube to perform it again. I don't know what that is. It's not MAGA, but it's, it's not it's MAGA. something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry MVPA. to bring politics into it. Yeah, so close to the election, but you know, what I will I will go out on a limb here and say, viz extensions I think are better than native extent native chart types. One hundred percent. They are just. They, when you're using them and experiencing them, they are just built different. I don't know how else to say that. They're built sharp. different. Yes, yes, they really are. They're sharp. They're responsive. Like they're the clean. Tips are just, they're are smooth. Just crisper. And it, what it what it sounds like is that they're easier to make than the native charts. Because for how long have people been asking for this kind of functionality, native in Tableau? And Tableau's response has been actually like, well, take a hell no to that. Instead, I've got a whole other thing that allows us to put whatever we want in here built on web technology instead. So it also feels like a de de like departing this world of VizQL, right? It feels like it's departing this world. And instead, <laughs> instead, and this is where you kind of have to bear with me here, this feels like a culmination in technologies. I don't think it's a coincidence the Viz extensions came out after VizQL data service. These extensions are being driven by VizQL data service yep. off into the web world. Yep. And then the web capabilities, which are modern, being developed by thousands and thousands of people in the world today, are just running off with it. And that's why these are crisp and native and, and lovely. But they're still formatted to look like Tableau. That's easy to do. And, and suddenly you've got this world this cube-like world where when you want exactly the thing you want, you can get it because the Viz extension will just do it for you. Yeah, um, exactly. I think there's so much potential here. And and most importantly, you want to get an update to that Viz extension, it will just update itself because exactly. it's hosted in the cloud. And it, it, will, just, cloud. it will just update. It just gets better. The, the bugs are not tied to the release, which is even better. Like They can just get fixed. Now, there are a couple of issues. So the extension isn't perfect. There's a few things. And, you know, again, I did another LinkedIn post where I was like, listen, we don't have to load these extensions with all the burden of everything that's ever come in the last decade, like printing them out, doing subscriptions, um, being able to get one-to-one -one PDF exports, being able to do page like all, all of these things have come out of the woodwork. And in many ways, I think it goes back to something that people will say is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Tables aren't the solution to everything. If you're Bad using content. this to like just, <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> sorry, there are other options available to people to, to like go get this. This is just meant to bring an experience to the product. And don't forget, these work on a dashboard. You can use dashboard parameter actions, set actions on these to get them to do the awesome things that you're already possible. So these are just even better than tables in many ways. They are they are tables on you know steroids with the capabilities that Tableau has. So use those functionalities to get around these new problems, but it will be more performant than anything that came before it because this base capability has been built in. Now, security. Oh, man, I can't tell you how many people say, oh, my company is not going to take a look at this. And I think this goes back to conference, right? This goes back to... Tamas Gordy's great Matt talk. He stood up on stage and said, look what I can do with the data. With my kittens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just, it's sort of escalated from there because the server community is very small. But understandably, Tab, I haven't done a good job of actually answering the question in lots of different ways. And this extension is network enabled, unlike the Sankey chart, which is sandbox. So I think there is a little bit missing there to explain why is the Sankey chart built by Tableau sandbox, but this table extension isn't sandbox. Like, what is the difference between the two? And I think there is something there, probably Tableau can't share that story, but there's something there that needs a little bit more exploration. Additionally, why is it the developers of other extensions can't build sandbox extensions yet? That's like a really important question to ask. They want to be able to. I've talked to Tristan. He says they'd love to be able to, but he can't at the moment. It's not a possibility. So I think 
answering these questions will get start to get people over the, the, the hill. But final, final point. If you use Tableau Cloud, your Tableau is your customer. This extension is built by Tableau. I think the burden of getting this through your team should be zero because you're already using the platform. It's hosted in US East One. So if you're even on that Tableau pod, there shouldn't be any issue with data portability. I guess if you're in Europe or some other country and you use a Tableau pod for that exact reason, then maybe you can't use this extension. But for anyone who's new S East where this extension is hosted, also in Tableau Cloud, I just don't see the problem here. Like, like the vendor Especially has with the trusted data platform. layer. Exactly, exactly. It's all on the same platform. So, you know, I do think we're starting to get over the hill here. We're starting to overcome some of these barriers, but Tableau could do a bit more to, you know, start to answer these questions more and more, more generally. Yeah. And I think just 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 on that point, for a generic user who just wants to be like, yeah, but I just want to be able to drive this in and put it out yeah. and start using yeah. it. Yeah. I don't think they see the steps required from an infospec perspective and all these things, which is why yeah. cloud, again, as, as I think you said, by way back in 2019 or 20, even early days of your channel, yeah. like cloud is going to be the single best cloud. I and said that watering. way too early. I, I said that way too early. It's still not fully happened. It's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not fully there yet, but it will be because that's the direction that they're pushing and pulling yeah. in, right? Yeah, um, it's getting there. Yeah, you can the, ba the backward compatibility, the fact that I can use this Viz extension today yes. is yeah. amazing, right? Yes. Like, otherwise, it's I'll be like, well, yeah, be. cool, but it's not for me. Just imagine in the past, because the native extensions were dependent on releases, that wouldn't be the case. And it, I think it's so easy to miss that point. Game changer, game changer in every way. I, 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 I would be happy if in 25.1, Tableau just said, boom, all charts of his extensions, deal with it. Like, I would. Like, <laughs> I, I would. If the native ones were sandboxed, why, why, would, why, why would there be an issue? So they they actually are simply Viz extensions, but yeah. I don't know it. Yeah. They just run natively. They come prepackaged with your product. They just it's just Tableau loads up a piece okay. of JavaScript. Ign ignore what I just it. said. If it's faster, I don't care. Make data performance again. <laughs> Exactly, ultimately, like ultimately, right? Like because again, the the thing that hamstrings a lot of what Tableau does at speed is the fact it's VizQL. Yes, like yes. Render man, okay, great, amazing. <laughs> like yeah. VizQL was a revolutionary data vision, and it still yeah. is really, really good. Right, yeah. it's still incredibly good as a experience. However, yeah. you peel back that hood and you do a performance recording. And yeah. you're trying to work out why one of my dashboards within an eight, no, fifth, 13 page workbook is always bugging out. Yeah. And I don't know whether it's a server side problem or a dashboard problem. And I'm trying to investigate. And then you realize the depth of which a query has to occur yeah. in the, in the actual dashboard in order to, in, in order to visualize the one, two, three, four, five, Chart sheets I've got on this dashboard. Yeah, it's crazy. Where do you start? Where do you start? Yeah. Yeah. In a in a is it in a Viz extension world, it's ah oh yeah, the Viz extension hasn't got the right data, or there's too much on detail. But I've still not seen a Viz extension be slow yet. Touch, yes. Yeah. Touch wood. They're, they're, they're just very different, and and I think additionally, um, because the work isn't being done to compute in memory to visualize. The work no, the data is just being pre-aggregated and sent off yeah. for visualization. The Mark Spain defines the aggregation and what should be generated as a table. If it, the way to think of it is in the background, there's a secret cross tab yeah. being built. That cross tab is then being shipped off to the extension for visualization. And at that point, web technology takes over. Now, the we, reason but, that's, fast, but that is the same thing that happens with VizQL. You get a temporary table stored, but it's but, not a materialized cross tab that exists, which is why, again, it comes down to this is the new cube to an extent, right? And oh. VizQL still has to then 
render tiles. It doesn't, it's not JavaScript. It's right. It renders tiles. It checks to see if that calculation to see if it can do it on device in browser or on server. If it can't do it on device, it ships that off to the server. The server renders the tiles and sends it back to you. By this time, the spinner's done four laps around the world and <laughs> your viz is still not loaded. So these viz extensions don't need to do that. They get the data and they just process them there and then. Um, I talked to um, uh, Jonathan Drummy a while back about this concept of Tableau's frame rate, right? And how yeah. many of the charts are like three frames per second. <laughs> if you actually try and track an update, it's just so slow. But these Viz extensions, they feel like the ones built on whatever they're built on now. Like if you have a high refresh rate screen, let's say 60 FPS above, like you can literally see that the chart, like the thing tracks your mouse like faster than your eyes can perceive. It's it's just another it's just another experience. I know maybe we're we're going into this too too deep. We love extensions is the short <laughs> is the short of it. <laughs> we can't wait for more. An more another time. example of a platform that's fully extensible. Yeah, right? exactly. I can't wait for someone like Mapbox to drop a Mapbox Viz extension that just brings Mapbox into Tableau and just lets you kind of set up your map inside of the Tableau view pane. That would be awesome, right? Like that's the kind of stuff I'm thinking. Just give it a few more years. And, you know, you know, Uber, when you used to go to their website, used to have that map of the world, right? That was very sort of uh, stylistic. Imagine like an Uber map uh, as a visit extension for visualizing, I don't know, Uber taxi rides or something like natively built for Tableau. I think the best Viz extensions will never grace the extension gallery because they'll be built for internal use to do awesome things that we will just never see. And I, I genuinely think that is actually what's going to... 100%. Really the, extent. the best physics extensions will never be something anyone will see publicly. Mm -hmm. They'll sit within a company doing Completely incredible right. things. And you'll see a tablet dashboard and you'll be like, how on earth is that being done? And it'll be this. It'll be this. Completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I hope to be a beneficiary of that world. <laughs> Absolutely. Just make it happen. You'll you'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. Um, any other parts of this release? Obviously, this cloud manager. I think that's quite a, a, an interesting cloud concept. Specific. It's not going to pull me to cloud, Tim. Don't worry. It's not going to pull you to cloud. But I do want to touch on something here, which is I think there's um there's this idea that one Tableau cloud website is one customer, and actually there's so many instances yeah, yeah, where yeah. where actually that's not the case. Um, and the way to think of this is that look, a Tableau cloud website is a site in the Tableau server terminology. And the site in the Tableau server terminology allows you to separate resources, separate space, and separate access. So things like authentication. It's essentially like a firewall between two spaces on the same Tableau ecosystem. And so you can use this for lots of different devices. For example, regulation, compliance, um, uh, cost centers in some cases, right? But then you can also do it to split business units. You can do it to split uh, different operational functions within one organization. You could split companies that are owned by a parent company using this mechanism. There's so many more. And so I can't really give more details than this, but I want you to try and guess, Ravi, how many companies do you think have more than, let's say, 10 Tableau cloud instances? Not sites, instances. Before this feature, there would have been instances, yeah. Over 100. Okay, I, I have no friend wrestlers, that's a big number or a small <laughs> number. Right. To give you some context, that is off by a country mile and in the wrong direction. It's, really? it's way more than that. It's way more than that. And I can't I can't give this metric, but though there is a scenario where we're talking about triple figures, numbers of customers that have on average well above 30 cloud instances to one organizer. Well above. Like well above. Now if I think about my time <laughs> working in the consulting world and seeing the lumber of departments and mini departments and yeah, instances yeah. where you're just sat there like 
why is this not one thing? And then Tableau is sitting there like, <laughs> just counting the money they're making exactly. of all these exactly. different departments and their various exactly. budgets exactly. where they've just spun off Tableau site after Tableau site after Tableau yeah. site. Yeah. So this feature, although it's pretty much a nothing feature to most people because we're not admins, we're not or whatever. If you're listening to this and going, what's the big odds about this? Well, what you should do is, you, and if, you, if you're using Tableau Cloud, you should go tell your admin and make sure they know about this because typically it's not even your admins for cloud who know this. It's the in IT teams in your organizations that are out there buying separate cloud instances for separate teams. And they'll also be the ones complaining to Tableau about why on earth am I having 20 course, different invoices? Yeah. Can I just group them into one? And with this, the answer is yes, you can, because Cloud Manager allows you to manage your licenses under one roof and distribute those licenses to different cloud accounts, which can also be different regions under the same uh, organization account. It's a bit like in Snowflake where you have an organization at the very top, it's a new concept, then you have accounts that yeah. belong to an organization. It's very similar to that. So um, very dry feature, but I also just wanted to make sure I sort of drum gave it some, gave it some love. Because I, I was, I was blown away by the number of companies that have more than 50 cloud instances to one company. It's actually wild. And that's not even close to the actual number. I'm deliberately keeping distance from the number for, for various reasons. So it's definitely a, um, uh, yeah, a, a very interesting thing. Now, other things to note, Tableau Pulse got a whole bootleg of releases. I'm not even going to go into each and every one of them. Um, Tableau Pulse, uh, Tableau Cloud went to Hyperforce. I still yep. don't really know what this is other than to say, I think it's just Salesforce's cloud instance of That's exactly what I think everything. Um, so instead of Tableau Cloud sitting somewhere else, it now sits on the same cloud as MuleSoft, blah, 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 Trailhead, whatever. So it's all under one roof. Mm -hmm. um, what else was there? Obviously, Microsoft. Um, spatial Bridge. parameters. Spatial parameters. Oh, yeah, yeah. With <laughs> spatial parameters based on WKT uh, uh, spatial data thing. Well known text. I'm like, who came up with that name? Um, <laughs> interesting feature. So many details in there that I just didn't know about. And now I've done the video and I've, 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 I've been, you know, the maps team has flooded me with lots of detail that I wish they'd given me before I'd done the video. <laughs> it's like, this is wrong. Like, for example, Ravi, what's a compact list? A small list. Well, what is it in Tableau? Oh, right. It's, it's where you're... No, I don't know what you're talking about. You, you said a compact compact list. list. It's a drop-down list. A compact list is a drop-down list. It's another name for a drop-down list. Okay. But when you're mapping, it's called a compact list. And I was doing a video, and I was literally hovering over the term compact list, and I was saying, why do we not have a drop-down list? And I'm hovering over compact list. So someone from the uh, architecture team just got in touch and said, actually, we do. It's uh, called a compact list. And I was like, I just replied, well, why is it called a compact list? And they just replied, well, it's always been that way. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't even know that. <laughs> If you open Tableau, you go try and do, like create a parameter or something with yeah. anything. I, I I can't remember the exact context, but it's always been compactless for spatial. It's just so bizarre, it's so so bizarre. Anyway, but I so, also remember that Tableau didn't have an apply button, and I think Andy Creeble definitely takes credit for that credit being like, for, yeah, from, from the multi good select feature. for the multi for select the, there wasn't an apply. It's like put an apply button in. I put the apply button in every multi-select, so thank you, Andy. But it, it's small things like that where you're like, these are just legacy features that people are like, didn't realize people wanted that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there is one th final thing with this thing. Do not load really complex polygons into it because you will you'll just freeze your computer. And this feels like an, a, a trap waiting to catch people out. But in essence, there's two ways you can use this. Using parameter actions and using a list of list of spatial compact objects. <laughs> Thank you, Ravi. A compact list. I'm um, if you use a compact list and you try and load into that list polygons from shape files, you are likely to probably freeze Tableau because what it has to do is take each and every point on that polygon Popular. and process that into the parameter, which takes forever if you've got, let's say, 
the polygon for the United Kingdom, which I don't know how many data points it has. Yeah. So what you should do is you should generalize the polygon in something like Alteryx, bring it down from thousands of tens of thousands of points down to maybe a uh, hundred that will massively make that faster and make it easier to do. Then it will work or use the, um, the parameter action. So something else feeds into that parameter. It's just feeding one item in. And I've then, got a third option. Yeah, go for it. Physics tension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Viz extension for everything. Well, the, the, you say this and, you know, I Man am sort of... surely make the most sense for a Viz extension. Well, super tables by Infotopics, right? That to me is a good example of an extension that has its own little world of capabilities built into the extension that don't need anything else like prime attractions or whatever. So... There is nothing to say that you couldn't build an extension where within that chart, you could build in custom interactions, right? Like a Correct. network chart or like something like where you click and drag and it changes the relationship. You know, all that kind of stuff is technically possible. So yeah, Viz extensions could absolutely be the, the answer. The, there's, yeah, there's lots of interesting things um, that I've spoken to a few people about. Um, well, once you start peeling back the onion you start to realize how much interesting things you can end up doing with yeah. a big ascension. And one such thing um, would be like a dialogue box, just creating a custom filter control set. That is just your own way of creating parameters because that, if your entire dashboard is physics extensions can talk to every single one of them, but in, in the same ecosystem yeah. and that is baller. Yeah. 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 And, and if you don't like the way that Tableau does filtering or sorting or parameters, right? Like I wish I could do an actual multi-select parameter, build it as a visit extension. Yeah. yeah. That's essentially the power that Tableau have handed people. Like instead of, instead of complaining about it, build it. Like if you really need it and you value it, build it. Um, Become a data dev. Yeah. I actually think there's not enough of them. Um, Correct. Yeah. And, and this is why like, I think this is, this is about to become uh not a problem for Tableau, but you can tell when they pitch a lot of these ideas, they haven't got the same sort of richness as, as they get when it comes about pitching other things that customers are coming to them flooding with. So, and the kind of companies that would be building these kind of awesome things are not really bought into Tableau. They kind of, you know, they kind of take not a good look. It's, it's a classic, you know, Salesforce tableau dunking you get from like Silicon Valley and like, oh never touch by Salesforce and like, you know, like you know, people laughing at like, oh my god, you know, look at how slow it is. It's not even built in the open web. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. And I was like, Yeah, but it is it is enterprise software. It's gotta go through 150 different things, like or yeah. like authentication and it's got to be built to a certain standard that you would expect. So yeah, this is just software. It's just how things work. Sorry. But anyway, it's just software. Yeah. That's just the, how things work. What <laughs> a place to end it. it. What a place to absolutely, end it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's been an interesting couple of months. So much has happened. I'm looking forward to the end of the year. Um, which also means Ravi, we need to actually get on the case with our little, survey that we're going to do right mm -hmm. um, and it won't be a survey per se like a big survey but we are going to try and reach out to um some let's say established members of the community but also new members of the community try and gauge their opinion on different parts of the product so we can yep. build i think a picture of what 2024 has been like um so we can kind of get ahead of the gartner report and actually give people some sort of perspective on what it's like to use the product rather than what it's like to purchase the product for sure if that makes sense so yeah we're going to be getting on that and sort of putting more stuff out so look and out i think that. yeah and then i think we're both going to be at data firm europe um indeed so look out for us there if you are attending just come and say hello um, absolutely absolutely I don't know what we're going to actually do around this podcast, but we'll, we'll do something. <laughs> Roving mics. We'll just do a five minute walk around the the the, the conference floor together. Oh. We can just have a chat after the keynote. Let's just like let's, let's just do, do like that. um. That, that's so yeah. much easier. I'll like bring um, I'll bring my my uh, mics. Roving mics and just clip them off, and we can just straight after literally immediate hot takes, um, <laughs> immediate hot takes after the conference. As we're walking out, we can just talk. Yeah. Just capture what we say, and then we can do some uh, 
post-conference edit. That's probably what we should just do the whole conference. <laughs> just record little snippets and then piece it together into a podcast. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I, I think that's... That. that's uh, I, I'm, I'm the sort of guy that hates roving mics because uh, it's kind of like you're not getting the... You're not capturing the essence. You're just asking questions. Yeah. Like, when really... I say roving mics, I'm talking about these... Um, Oh no! Oh, sorry. Lapel three. mics, fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I thought you meant like, "Hello, I am Tim." No, 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 no. Clip it in, switch it on. Let's just talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, good. 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 Right. We'll call it there. See you soon, Ravi. Take care.